The advertising around the earliest women's hair removal products that were commercially available was so explicitly shaming women. We all get it. We all kind of think like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's society. What are you gonna do? Let's kick things off with a little bit of story time. So I think it's important to like share your personal thoughts around like your own body hair and like your own relationship with it because it's not something that like I think a lot of women talk about openly. So that's why I wanted to add in a little section about how I feel about my own body hair, just to kind of normalize it, you know? In the last six months, I actually started working remotely. So it's not like I've been thinking about how I'm really appearing in front of other people because I don't see many other people. So I wasn't really worrying about it. And also because it's been autumn winter time, everyone's wearing long trousers and stuff and layering up. So I just wasn't really thinking about it. So I've just let my leg hair grow out to what it, naturally looks like after six months of not shaving which is the longest time that i've ever gone without shaving my legs but now it's march so it's getting around to springtime and i'm about to pull out my spring summer wardrobe so that means like cute dresses and skirts and things that i want to start wearing and so now i'm having to think about okay am i going to start shaving my legs this is so annoying for me because it's one of those cases where I am 100% a feminist. I'm literally building this channel around like concepts like feminism and sustainability. So I like, I 100% like know the theory. Like I know that female body hair is just kind of perceived as gross or, you know, embarrassing um, or something that you should get rid of by society and it's only natural and it's your natural body and like all of this, like I get it like up here. But like, then when I think about actually going out into society, having six months of unshaved leg on show, it just makes me feel really anxious and nervous. And I just, I know that I'm gonna cave and I'm gonna end up shaving my legs for spring, summer. But it's a perfect example of one of these little intrusive thoughts that we as women have all the time about our bodies and the idea that we're constantly being judged on our appearance and how we look and our bodies so we're always sort of hyper aware of how we are appearing to other people and the craziest part of this is is that like it's not even about people that we care about and that we talk to and that we have relationships with it's complete strangers like people on the bus like really why should you care why should i care what this person that i barely ever interact with thinks about my leg hair um but maybe it's because i am a chronic people pleaser if it's the case that if i shave my legs everyone will like me you know i'd probably shave my legs so as you can tell i've been thinking about this quite a lot some of the interesting questions that i've been coming up with have been things like mm, isn't it interesting how society tells women that they should have gorgeous long flowing locks on their head perfect beautiful shiny healthy hair but have absolutely no hair anywhere else and also isn't it interesting that having short hair on your head but long hair everywhere else means that you're an angry feminist lesbian and let's not forget you're also unattractive and undesirable um, I just feel like it's incredibly loaded and I think every woman kind of knows this implicitly like we all get it We all kind of think like yeah, it's <laughs> it's society. What are you gonna do? So I thought I'd dig into that a little bit and just get into the research So let's go way back to our cave woman days were people thinking about their body hair then and the answer is yes but mostly men and not for any of the beauty standard related reasons that we are today. So as a caveman, this is really gross, but they would take like sharp shells and then literally like scrape the hair off their head and off their bodies. Um, there's a few theories about why, but like potentially it was to prevent parasites from like growing in your body hair. And the other theory is that when they got into fights, their opponent wouldn't have anything to grab onto on their body if they were clean shaven, 
but like sharp shells. So it wasn't, it wasn't just hair that came off, let's put it that way. Fast forward a little bit to ancient Egypt and then also ancient Rome hair removal became much more about class and sort of cleanliness. So if you were higher or upper class, you would shave your whole body as a woman. And this is when sugaring was also invented, which is like a form of waxing. In Europe, women didn't really care about their body hair until Queen Lizzie turned up and decided that um, a long brow was fashionable. Um, and that's when women started like shaving their eyebrows and also getting rid of some of the hair around their their forehead to like lengthen their foreheads. Um, quick trick for that, walnut oil and cat feces. Mm, delicious, that's gonna make your bathroom smell so good. And then uh, enter Darwin and his theory of natural selection where he said that humans have evolved to have less hair because it's more sexually attractive. So thanks for that one, Charlie. And so we are thrust into the 20th century when body hair removal for American and British women really starts to take off. And it really kicked off with this first ad in Harper's Bazaar for women's hair removal treatments in 1915. And Gillette also brought out their first women's razor at this time. The advertising around the earliest women's hair removal products that were commercially available was so explicitly shaming women. Like the entire advertising tactic seemed to be like, you should feel embarrassed about your body hair. So in order to not feel embarrassed, even though we're the ones making you feel embarrassed, you should shave it using all of these treatments that you should buy and capitalism. And so these ads would talk about body hair as like embarrassing and unsightly and offensive and something that, you know, we as a society are all collectively objecting to, which, um, it's up for debate whether that was already kind of the case in public consciousness or if this was literally just advertisers creating this shame and pushing it onto women to sell products. <laughs> These days, I don't think anything with that explicit messaging would ever actually be approved because it would be instantly shut down by like feminists. Um, but today we instead just go for more implicit ways of shaming women. Today we're just implying that women need to unleash their inner baby dolphin to be able to embrace fully their goddess potential. Thanks, Venus. A few factors coincided to get us to where we are today. So for example, fashion from like the 1920s onwards, women started wearing things with higher hemlines, with shorter sleeves, like strapless evening gowns as well, that started to show off their underarms and also their legs where they hadn't been showing any of that skin before. So there is an argument that existing ideas about body hair and the need to remove it were just then applied to more of the skin that you could see. Or it could be that the advertising and the sort of culture that was building around these products was what was pushing this shame onto women to sell these products basically. And then over time, of course, we get bikinis, we get swimsuits being much more socially acceptable to wear to show off all that skin. And so of course you get bikini lines and the need to wax your bikini line. Also women were used to wearing stockings, which would of course just hide your leg hair, but stockings started to be made with nylon at the end of the 1930s, but then there was a nylon shortage in World War II, so women had to go without their stockings, so they had to show their bare legs, so obviously they had to start shaving. In the 1960s and the 70s, we did have the sort of hippie movement and second wave feminism using body hair as kind of this symbol of feminism and using it as sort of a tool in the fight for equality, but unfortunately this was short-lived and basically today, every woman shaves. Give this like a video, give this, give this like, give this video a like if you think we should have stuck with the flower power. So to recap all of that in one neat sentence, we basically went from it being a newsworthy story in the 1920s when a woman cut her leg shaving to it being a news story in 1999 when Julia Roberts showed up to the premiere of Notting Hill in a sequin dress with her armpits unshaved. So we've kind of been touching on this, but let's unpack more of why body hair is seen as bad. Firstly, people arguing against body hair often dive straight in with the statement that body hair is simply unattractive because the most important thing that a woman can be is conventionally attractive to the heterosexual man. 
right? I mean, I don't even have to state how heteronormative that is, but it's really heteronormative. And it also focuses on a woman's worth as inherently tied to how sexually attractive she is to men. Some people will say, oh, it's unattractive because it shows that you're like unhygienic and you don't uh, look after yourself, which is so dumb when you look at like, if you look at some of the activists that are kind of like, pro body hair or like body hair positive on say TikTok, a lot of them will be like women wearing these flawless full faces of makeup, like their hair's done, they're wearing like beautiful outfits and just like showing off a little bit of like stomach hair or like underarm hair. And then these people are like, oh, that's so gross. Like you're clearly not looking after yourself. Like, have you seen her face? I think she's spending a lot more time on her appearance than you are. And the whole hygiene point is just crazy anyway. If it was more hygienic, then men would also shave all of their body hair, but they don't. And body hair also helps us to regulate our temperature, to stop stuff from getting inside our bodies like dirt. It's there for many, many, many reasons. And the fact that we still have it shows that it has some sort of evolutionary advantage, despite Charles Darwin saying that having less hair is more sexually attractive. But nevertheless, being hairy is unattractive. So why is being hairless attractive by contrast? Okay, this is gross, but you know who's hairless naturally? Kids. Children. Being a naturally hairless human usually just means that you are a child and you are pre-puberty. And what else comes with pre-puberty? virginity for women, which is this prized possession that they are to protect at all costs and the ultimate conquest for men. So there is an argument that men are attracted to women who are hairless because it makes them look younger. It associates them more with being innocent and submissive and childlike. Mm. Yeah, it's real uncomfortable, but it fits. Qualities valued in children are also valued in women. So being tiny, being in need of protection, doing what you're told. And personally, like I can really vouch for this because I'm five foot 11. For a long time, I can really shake the feeling that I was supposed to be a lot smaller. Like I was always trying to make myself smaller and like daintier because that's what I'd been presented as the image of like an elegant, woman. So yeah, hairlessness is also connected to the infantilization of women, which is a whole other issue that we could talk a lot more about. So if you want me to um, dive a bit deeper into that topic, then let me know in the comments. And it's also related to things that women experience all the time, like being told they're too loud, they're too ambitious, or not being submissive enough. And these are qualities that are viewed as unfeminine, and they are also the qualities that we associate with like poorly behaved kids. So having body hair basically means that you're not trying to fit into society's mold. It means that you're kind of taking a stand, you're rebelling, you're like writing your own story, all of which makes us less feminine because we're less submissive and less conforming. So naturally having body hair is associated with feminism, surprise, surprise. And because body hair has these negative connotations, it being associated with feminism sort of passes those associations on to feminism as well. And this gives people the idea that feminism is only supported by like ugly, unhygienic women who don't look after themselves. Um, and that feminism is only supported by women who might as well not even be women because they're growing out their body hair. So obviously they're trying to be like men. And then you also get the misconception that like feminism is only about things like body hair. It's like trivial, which is obviously not the case. And the body hair non-body hair binary helps to strengthen the masculine and feminine binary as well. So if you have long hair on your head and no hair elsewhere, then you're a woman. And if you have short hair on your head and long hair elsewhere, then you're a man, right? Like those are the two options. And I was trying to figure out like why looking at my legs with long leg hair, but my nails painted was so like, uncomfortable or like weird for me and then when I started thinking about it in this way of like masculine versus feminine it's because like the two things don't gel like painted nails that's associated with femininity with women and having long leg hair that's like a man's thing and I grew up in a family where like those binaries were very much so adhered to and in 
that context, I just never really saw the mixing of traditionally masculine and traditionally feminine as something that was like natural or normal. And I think that's probably the same for a lot of other families, even like it's not an intentionally malicious thing that our parents do, it's just it's society and it's what we're told from a young age. Like it's literally all in your head, like it's all cultural. When I was researching all this, I saw another video on YouTube talking um, about this and it was this girl reacting to it um, and she was like, aren't there more important things to be uh, talking about than body hair? And like, why does everything have to be a movement nowadays? So I thought we would talk about why this does need to be a movement and why it is actually really important. How much time do you think the average woman spends a day thinking about her body hair? This is really important because it's definitely a distraction from women just being able to go out into the world and achieve the things that they want to do and that are good for them. And instead of paying attention to meetings or paying attention to lectures, they're thinking about whether they should have got a bikini wax because they're going to the pool later. And as I mentioned earlier, the fact that we use body hair to kind of strengthen this gender binary is really harmful for young people because they grow up with this perception that you can only be a man in this one particular way that looks this one particular way and you can only be a woman in this one particular way that looks this one particular way and also there's nothing in between there's no fluidity there's no flexibility it's literally you're one or the other and you have to be one or the other in these preconceived like boxes that you have to kind of slot yourself into and then if you choose to be a man then you have all of these expectations on you and if you choose to be a woman then you have all of these expectations on you and that's just that's how it is and this is just harmful for kids because they don't it doesn't give them the flexibility to just explore who they are and like go with what they genuinely feel is the right thing for them the right things to wear the right things to say the right like actions to take because they might not line up with these dichotomies that they've been taught are all that exist in the world of gender. And of course this whole thing is giving feminism a bad name which is really sad and really important because feminism still needs to exist today. Like the work of feminists is nowhere near done. Like violence against women, incels, online hatred against women, like these are big topics that we still need to tackle. Like there's still a gender pay gap, like there's a gender eco gap, there is a gender data gap, like there's gaps everywhere, okay? The gaps have not been filled um, and so when we associate the body hair debate with feminism and like not just associate it but equate it, we kind of are getting rid of like all of the potentially even more important parts of feminism that we still 100% need today. And that's not good for anyone, like including men, because the patriarchy hurts men too. Also this stuff is expensive. The average woman will spend $2,000 in their whole lifetime on shaving products and also if they wax it's up to $23,000. Plus it's wasteful, so the Environmental Protection Agency estimates that about 2 million razors are thrown away and just in America every year. And this is obviously contributing to the landfill crisis and also filling up our oceans with unnecessary plastic. The hair removal industry is worth billions to advertisers so obviously there's an incentive to keep it going and to continue this shame and embarrassment um, that is associated with body hair. Capitalism. These advertisers make you feel like these products are essential and you need them. Uh, obviously if everyone stopped using them then they would go bust. There are people trying to reclaim the narrative for sure especially on TikTok hashtag body hair is natural has 193 million views. Brands like Billy and Estrid are also starting to use actual body hair in their advertising um, instead of showing like already shaved legs being shaved which is what Venus tends to do. It's kind of the same as never showing menstrual blood or anything like remotely red in like menstrual product advert. So there are brands that are sort of spreading the message that like you don't have to shave, it's 100% your choice, you don't have to remove your body hair, but if you do, we make the products for that. Some celebrities and influencers are also increasingly calling out these ridiculous beauty standards that women are being held to, but not without major backlash, especially 
in the world of social media. There was a study done where 34 female university students um, were challenged to grow out their body hair across 10 weeks and then record people's reactions to that. And the responses really showed just how strong these reactions still are today. Reactions to something that literally has no bearing on the rest of the woman's life, like her ability to achieve literally anything. The author of the study, Brienne Fars, writes, women confronted direct and anticipated homophobia and heterosexism from others, as well as hostility for rejecting traditional norms of femininity. Heterosexual women regularly encountered demands that they acquire permission to grow body hair from their male partners, while queer and bisexual women expressed reluctance about further outing themselves via their body hair. In some corners of the internet, women are dyeing their armpit hair, wacky colours and like adding glitter to them. And then in other areas of the internet, you've still got men commenting on random models' Instagram posts saying how repulsed they are and please can you shave your armpit hair. Clearly we have a long way to go. This coffee is like definitely cold by now. I don't know why I always do this to myself. So will not shaving my legs really help this case this summer? I want to think yes and I really want to do it. So I need encouragement. So let me know in the comments. But I am honestly conf conflicted, especially because if women are only valued when they conform to societal expectations of them and all of these beauty standards and that's when they are allowed into the spaces where they actually have any real power and they can make real changes like culturally, societally, like institutionally, systemically, then maybe I need to conform to those expectations to be able to get into those spaces and despite how wrong all of those expectations might be right now. It's really sad but if society isn't giving loud, hairy, angry feminists a platform, then you kind of have to think like, what is the point in being a loud, angry, hairy feminist? Oh, except for the fact that maybe that's just who you are and you shouldn't really have to conform to society's expectations and these gender binaries and these dichotomies that are set up from the moment you're born to have a platform and to have a say and a seat at the table. So all of that just kind of sucks, doesn't it? Um, and I've kind of burned myself out a little bit by talking about it for the last hour to myself in an empty room. But that said, it's definitely a conversation that I want to keep going in the comments. So whatever thoughts you have on this that are constructive and not just like, bunny hair is gross, then like leave those in the comments below and let's chat. Does all of this make you want to pull your hair out? or not. Let me know your thoughts and please subscribe and share this video to other people so that it can spread so that we can continue having these conversations online and offline and just like open up the debate a little bit and get comfortable with body hair. That's it for this video. Uh, I'm gonna drink the rest of my incredibly cold coffee now. Maybe I can just call it iced coffee. Anyway, stay kind and I'll see you next time. Bye.